Good morning. My name is Miss Ani, and I'm with the Kodiak Public Library. And I'm here to do story time with you today. I have two books that I used to read to my daughter when she was little. And I love these books. I hope you love them too. And they both have an Alaska theme. So let's see if you like them. The first one is Little Red Snapper Hood. Sort of like Little Red Riding Hood, but with an Alaskan twist. This is by Neil Gilbertson, and the artist is Evan Zerbetz. And he's the same artist that um, drew the pictures of the second book that we're going to read to. This is a fishy fairy tale. Once upon a maritime, so very long ago, there lived a lovely snapper fish who had a reddish glow. With crimson cheeks and scarlet fins, she clearly understood why other fish gave her the name Little Red Snapper Hood. And there's her Little Red Snapper Hood. One day her mother said to her, Oh dear, how time does fly. Please rush to Grandma's distant home, this fresh-baked octopi. Would you like to eat a pie right now? How about an octopi? Look at that. It's got tentacles coming out of it. Does that look good? <laughs> Check out her kitchen. She's mother is standing on a rug that's actually a starry flounder and on their fridge they have a list of what to get at the store. Sea cucumber, dogfish food, pilot fish bread. Are those the things that you have on your grocery list? How about some sea cow milk? Here's Hermie. <laughs> Fun pictures. Red swam into a grove of kelp where frightful creatures hide, and soon a slimy wolf eel came and slithered to her side. <gasps> Ooh, the dark kelp forest. Where is it that you're going, girl? What is it that you've brought? The fishing boats are out today, be careful. Don't get caught. Sort of ominous, a little bit scary. I'm going to my grandmama's and bringing octopi. I shouldn't speak to strangers, sir. So thank you and goodbye. And look at the octopi. It's fishing. <laughs> the octopi is eating because it's hungry too. She scurried off across the reef as fast as she could swim. But the eel, he chose a shorter way known only just to him. Would you like to meet him some dark night? Ooh, looks a little bit scary. You never know. <gasps> he got there first to Grandma's house and chased old Graham. Give me your oyster bed. He snuggled in and covered up and took her place instead. And there's poor Grandma. Her spectacles fell off. She's reading Billy the Squid for her bedtime story. And there goes her tea. Uh-oh, poor Graham. <laughs> Red Snapper finally arrives at Grandma's house. She knocked upon the door. The door shell didn't chime. Come in, my dear, the eel called out. It's nearly supper time. Uh-oh. My grandma, oh, grandma, what big eyes you have to see you with, my dear. And what sharp teeth are in your mouth. Come closer over here. Would you go over there? Look at the octopi. <laughs> oh, 
But Red Snapper sensed this wasn't Graham. I do not think I should. Then Wolfiel jumped from Grandma's bed and caught her by the hood. <gasps> oh no. What's going to happen? Red Snapper was quite terrified. She cried, don't let me die. But Wolfiel just ignored her pleas and snagged the octopi. Do you have some topping, dear? Grape jellyfish or such? A little dab of a la mode would add the perfect touch. So Wolfiel isn't gonna eat this guy. Wolfiel just wants to eat the pie. And look at this octopi. It's holding a fork like it's going to eat itself. <laughs> Grape jellyfish? Mm. Delicious. They both slurped down the octopi, Red Snapper and the Beast. And when Grandma joined the chummy pair, it was a joyful feast. Oh, they're going to be buddies. And so you see, my little fish, both ignorance and loathing can make us fear potential friends disguised in wolf eels' clothing. Ah, so they didn't have to be scared. They are actually friends now, huh? And look, they're both tucked into bed. Here's wolf eel all slithered around, and here's her and me. And Grandma's reading the story to them. Aw, new buddies. And that's the end of Little Red Snapperhood. I hope you liked it. So our next book is Blueberry Shoe. And I'm getting really excited for berry season. I picked my very first salmon berry a couple of days ago. They're just starting to ripen up. And we have a little bit longer before blueberries show up. But this will get us in the mood. Blueberry Shoe by Ann Dixon, and the pictures are by Evan Zerbetz, same guy who drew the pictures in Little Red Snapperhood. This copy is actually signed, which is pretty cool, signed by the, the illustrator. Once there was a family who loved to pick blueberries. Every summer they picked their way up Ptarmigan Mountain and scrambled laughing and munching back down. Ah, look, look at that family. Do you like to pick berries? I do. You put one in your mouth and one in the bucket, one in your mouth and one in the bucket. <laughs> but one summer, somewhere between the top of Ptarmigan Mountain and the bottom, Baby lost his shoe. There's Baby. Bye-bye, shoe. And it looks like the family doesn't even notice the shoe because they're busy looking at all the beautiful nature. There's the shoe. <gasps> lost your shoe, exclaimed Mama. Now what will we do? There was only one thing to do. Back up the mountain they trudged searching mossy hummocks for one tiny shoe. Back down the mountain they crept, empty-handed. They didn't find it. Until at last, shadows grew so long that they saw shoes everywhere and nowhere at all. They're searching and searching. They can't find the shoe, but then they start to see it in the clouds, huh? Everyone was tired except Baby, who hollered, bye-bye, shoe, and played with his cute little toesies all the way home. That night, as the family slept, dreaming of blueberries and shoes, a weary little vole up Ptarmigan Mountain bumped her nose on Baby's shoes. <gasps> What's this? she chirped, sniffing about. A little nest for me. She tugged at the shoelace. 
She snipped and gnawed little tiny pieces to tuck inside the shoe, and then she climbed into her cozy new nest and slept. Oh, cute. <laughs> what a perfect little nest. Little Vole woke up hungry. She left her cozy nest and scurried through the brush, nibbling at flowers. But somewhere between the brush and the flowers, little Vole lost her nest. Lost my nest, she squeaked. Now what will I do? There was only one thing to do. She dug a burrow in the soft, damp earth and rested. Look at that flower meadow. That's just like Kodiak's flower meadows. By now, Baby's shoe was halfway to Fox's den. Ooh, I think I skipped a page. No, I didn't. It smells strongly of vol, thought Mother Fox. There's Mother Fox. It's a plaything for my kits. She trotted towards home, but she stopped at the top of the hill. With a nip of her teeth, she bit through the sole. A shake of her head tossed the plaything sky high. There it goes, woo! It landed thump. Up fluttered Ptarmigan. <gasps> Startled from her hiding place with a leap, Frog gave chase, I'm sorry, Fox gave chase. But a moment too late, Ptarmigan flapped furiously towards safe trees below. Fox gave up and turned back to her plaything. That fox would surely like to eat that ptarmigan but the ptarmigan gets away. But somewhere between the top of the hill and the trees below, Mother Fox lost her plaything. Lost my plaything, she lamented. Now what will I do? There was only one thing to do. She returned to the den empty-mouthed. Children, I'm home, she barked, and the kits all skipped and yipped. Hooray, Mama's home. Meanwhile, Baby's shoe was being seriously sniffed by a big brown bear. Curious, mumbled the bear. This tiny morsel smells of fox and vole. Mmm. Is there nothing delicious inside? Hmm. I guess I'll save it for later. Bear flung the morsel into a blueberry patch and began digging after squirrels. Paws full of dirt flew into the air, showering bushes and berries and one tiny shoe. So now the shoe has holes in it and the shoe has dirt and blueberries in it. At last, with no luck, Bear became tired and he remembered his curious morsel. But somewhere between the blueberry patch and the squirrel holes, Bear had lost his tiny morsel. Lost my morsel, he grumbled. Now what will I do? There was only one thing to do. He munched blueberries by the snoutful all the way home. Mmm, delicious. And there's the tiny shoe. Everybody's been playing with that shoe. As summer turned to fall, blueberries withered and fell. Snow soon covered the blueberry seeds that dropped into baby's shoe. Bear slept through the darkness as winter snows piled deep. Fox hunted, vole. Fox hunted, vole nibbled, and the family who loved to pick blueberries ate blueberries all winter long. Mmm. Finally, summer returned, and the blueberries came alive. They grew and greened and ripened, and one day the family returned too. They picked their way up Ptarmigan Mountain, even Baby. 
for he was barely a baby anymore. And they scrambled, laughing and munching all around. <gasps> Look at this, exclaimed sister. On her hands and knees, the family gathered about. It's my blueberry shoe, said baby. But who planted the blueberries? Sister wondered. And who filled the shoe with dirt? Wondered Dad. And who poked holes for the roots in the rain? Wondered Mama. Baby wondered, who took my shoelace? So who planted the blueberries? Was it Bear? Who filled the shoe with dirt? Do you remember? I think it was Bear. And who poked holes for the roots and the rain? I think that was Fox. And do you remember who took the shoelace? Cute little vole to make his nest. They all helped plant that blueberry. When back down the mountain, the family crept, very stained, smiling, and tired. Each carried a bucket brimful of blueberries. Everyone except Baby, who carried a bucket full of shoe. He's pretty proud of that shoe. Baby planted his shoe in the garden with a new shoelace tied in a bow. And next year, he was the first to pick a single ripe berry from his beautiful blueberry shoe. What do you think of that? So, two super fun Alaskan books, and I hope you had fun with story time. I will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye.